Hey guys, my name is Tom, and this is some Kill Confirmed on Dome. Uh, I'm not really going to talk about the gameplay. I've tried to do this a couple times, and like always, I, I let you know that because I, I just keep uh, messing it up from the start, but I think I got my head around it, and so I'm just going to go with it. Like always, it'll probably be all over the place. But a while back, I posted some dual comms with Graham, and we were talking about uh, the use of the word hipster and this kind of hipster mentality that can revolve around YouTube that we've noticed. And... Uh, you know, to define that word for you guys, in case you don't know what we're talking about, uh, it, which to do so is it feels ridiculous uh, because, it, 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 you know, that is the social clique that I found myself belonging in. And, uh, of course, you know, you know nobody likes labels, uh, especially those in my social circle of, well, you know, you don't like to label it. It's even describing, you know, oh, I'm going to this show and I'm going to go see this band. Well, what's the band sound like? Telling another person what a band sounds like is is ridiculously impossible for somebody that doesn't like labels, and so you're trying not to label it because I don't like buzzwords like indie or uh, yeah, whatever the fuck else is getting thrown around nowadays. Um, you know, I take those things very literal. It was like when emo became an adjective for anything whiny. Uh, you know, as a person that grew up listening to that genre. That really bothered me because, uh, it, you know, that's not the original intent behind it. And to, so to see it warped and thrown up and just eventually turned into like a fucking verbal meme, uh, you know, was was disappointing. Uh, you know, and so so it on it, it goes with this, uh, you know, now that I'm seeing of like the reason that, you know, uh, let me address the stereotypes first before I even go into what I was going into. You know, I, I guess the stereotypes that. That are kind of, you know, I, I guess funny in their own way are like the love of Macintosh computers and uh, as I'm sitting here talking into an iMac. And the love, you know, growing shitty beards and, and drinking PBR and listening to vinyl records and wearing ridiculous clothes. Well, I don't wear ridiculous clothes, you know, I like, you know, I, I pick my own clothes based on my own personal style. And that's just the thing is you want, well, you want to be able to pick, uh, you know, based on your own personal taste. And fuck the rest, you know, you should be able to do so and not be worried about, I don't know, the the the, the social, I guess, uh, norms that are that are there to govern you or to label you or to clump you in. But I guess clicks are unavoidable and, and so it goes, you know, you belong to who you belong to. For some people, they love this sense of belonging. It it, it, it gives them a purpose. And some people, you know, it, it's the exact opposite of what they wanted. They just do what they want to do. They don't want to be lumped into one area. And it, it does suck for some people because they tend to get pigeonholed. Like, uh, in, in every area. You see people that, uh, on YouTube, that originally were, you know, posting COD commentaries. And they no longer want to play Call of Duty. And so they had a hard time breaking out of that. And you feel bad for those guys because they got pigeonholed right into that. If, like... They post Call of Duty, and the minute they stop posting Call of Duty and wanted to switch it up, you know, they get accused of, I don't know, selling out or changing, or why you no post Call of Duty? And, and why, I don't know, I guess what I'm saying is you just want to be able to wish them well on their new venture and let them change, because change is good, you know, in, in some areas. Uh, you know, I, I used to say I'm a big advocate for change, you know, and, and I am in myself of, like, changing myself for the better. On certain things, though... I'm a very routine-based guy. I, I, you know, I like being comfortable and breaking out of that at times, uh, especially in moments like these where I feel like I am taking like a small stand on an issue. Uh, it makes me very uncomfortable. But sometimes that's healthy, and it's nice to be able to get on here and express myself. My original point, though, was that what got me into that culture particularly was... You know, my friends and myself had a very love for do-it-yourself ethos. We liked being a part of a group that liked making their own things. I liked seeing local underground bands. I liked being at small shows. I liked buying records that sounded like they were made in a bathroom because it was tangible to me. I, you know, I felt like it was something I can hold in my hands. It was very real, and it's almost as if you knew the person that made that record. The same doesn't go for me in films. I love independent films. Uh, but, I, you know, the more, I guess, uh, stereotypical candy they get, it, it, it drives me insane, you know. And, and storytelling, I want, you, I, you know, I want that very, I, I guess, uh, kind of stereotyped narrative where, you know, I want a character story. I like, you know, when I'm hearing a story about somebody, I like to care about that character. And if you can't make me care about your character in that first, you know, opening ten minutes, I kind of, you know, I stop giving a shit. And, and uh 
that happens to me a lot. The more uh, I guess you know, a film strives to be just to, uh, I guess strives to break the mold. Now, in commentaries and uh, internet content, I guess mainly YouTube, uh, because that's you know something we all share in common. I look for something genuine. Again, I look for this do-it-yourself ethos. It's funny that on, only on on YouTube, I, you know, I almost wish this underground sensation could happen for YouTube commentators that are really small, that they could have this underground moment where people are seeking out these, uh, you know, lower people. Not because my I'm a small channel myself, but that smaller channels would stick up for each other. I've mentioned this in the past that you know I would rather see it. My Graham and I used to joke of like. You, you wish that smaller channels would band together like an independent label would, you know, and you're all repping each other's shows and putting out each other's records until eventually you have your own support group. And that's what smaller channels need. And, and, and you know, and you want to see a community like that, a supportive community, because uh, you know, I'm tired of seeing kind of this backbiting uh, attitude that's out there, fighting each other, fighting each other for views, unwritten rules. And I think Goldglove had posted on Twitter that he's sick of unwritten rules, and I couldn't agree more with him. You know, I think you and your friends should write your own rule book. And as both producers and consumers, I think there should be a demand for the quality that you yourself want, that you and your group, your crew, whatever you want to call it, bros, lads, whatever. Demand what you want, seek out what you want, and that doesn't mean go out and hate the things that you're that are not part of your group, but to you know embrace what you love, boost it up, support it, send it out, you know, be a street team for it, and be comfortable with the rest. I'm out of time, guys. I'm probably actually going long, but I will talk to you next time. If you know, I'm gonna rewatch it and and see if there's anything more to add. But have a great day, and I will talk to you later.